So welcome back. Uh, in the second part, we're going to be making a couple of trays. Trays for which the rocks are going to be sitting on and a tray for which the plants are going to be sitting on. And I'm going to show you how uh, to make these parts because they are the second, second simplest um, parts to make, in uh, my opinion. Um, so I just thought I'd show you some new functions, some new features, some new ways of designing things. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a new component. So we can go into this assemble tab and this first thing right here is called new component. Now it's going to prompt you to label the component we just made. So I'll call it base and then click OK. And now it's transparent, which means that uh, we're now working on a new component. So we can straight out click create sketch and it's going to select the origin uh, of our assembly so the origin of everything is going to be that point so we can use that origin or we can use a plane that already exists so since we know that our trays will be act will be sitting on this plane and this plane we can just straight up just select those so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm going to select this top plane select that and we have our plane so like always I'm going to project all the geometry on this plane so I'm going to go to create project and I'm going to select this contour over here just need to zoom in a bit select this contour and click OK so now you can see the contour and we're going to create a rectangle create center rectangle like that okay so we want the rectangle to be snug with this line with with like all the four corners. So the way we can do this is um, we can straight up drag them into the corner and they'll snap together. But the only problem with that is when you 3D print, uh, nothing is perfect. So if we make both um, both this tray and like the contour of our uh, base the same exact dimensions they're not going to fit together so we actually have to make this rectangle a little bit smaller so how we can do this is we can actually click sketch dimension and we can select this line and this line of a rectangle and we can offset them a certain distance so I can offset these by one millimeter and it'll still sit on the ledge the printer might print it a little too big and, and then it'll have some wiggle room and if it prints it a little bit too small it still has some wiggle room. So I think that's good enough distance and we'll do the same thing for the top. We'll make just so we can see it, pull it down, just pull it down a bit. We'll offset this, this and we'll make it one millimeter again. So now we can click finish sketch and we can extrude. So we're going to select everything that we want and we're going to extrude it a certain distance. So what you can do is you can actually you can actually input a distance, but I like to base uh, my features off of other features. So I can actually say that the extent I want it to extrude two and then I can click this top plane so it'll extrude up to the top plane and it'll be perfectly flush okay perfect so we've got our little tray now we just need to make holes which our plants can sit in so I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane of our tray and I'm going to make some circles and I'm going to uh, space them out. So we can have a random circle, random circle, random circle, random circle. So I'm going to dimension one of the circles and all of the other circles are going to be the same dimension. So we can make this about 25 millimeters. That seems fair. And now, if we want to dimension this circle, press dimension, 
And now when you input a dimension, I can click 25 and it'll be the same size, or I can just click on this dimension that I already made and press enter. And now fx means that this circle is a function of this circle. So if I make them all a function of that circle, now I, I want to change this dimension to 18 millimeters, they all change. And that's exactly what I want. Okay, so all of these circles are a function of each other. I want to make a certain pattern. So I want these circles, just to get the most space, I want the circles to look a little bit like this so that the plants have the most room. So in order to do this, um, I'm going to have to make everything look very clean and um, concentric. So then this is where you can go into your constraints and you can select horizontal slash vertical. So you click on this, you can click on this circle and then this circle and they will snap so that they're always on the same horizontal line. So if you move these up and down, they move together. So we want to do the same thing for the bottom ones. Click bottoms and now those two are constrained as well. So now what we can do is that we can space these out to however we see fit. So now I'm thinking that 25 actually is a little bit too small. So I might make it 30 millimeters. And now I can space these out however I want. We're just going to make dimensions as we go. Um, let's make this 30 millimeters from the wall and 20 millimeters from that wall. Let's make the distance between these two 75 millimeters. Let's make the distance between these two 30 millimeters. Distance between these two 75 millimeters. So just like I did before with um, making some dimensions a function of others, since these are both 30 and these are both 75, why not just make them the same? You can click, double click on this, click on your other dimension, press enter. Now they're all the same dimensions, so you don't have to worry about going back and respacing them again. So the only thing left is to determine the height of this circle the, the distance separated by both and we're going to make it about 40 millimeters and then boom everything's constrained so it looks pretty good it looks pretty concentric so I'm going to finish the sketch I'm going to extrude all of these circles and I'm going to extrude them to object and then if you rotate it around, you can select the bottom plane. You can't select the bottom plane because this body is in the way. So you can just turn the body off with uh, this little visibility icon over here. And you can select the bottom of this tray and you can press OK. And we have our first tray. So that was quite easy. And we can do the same exact thing for our next component. So we're going to make our other component again we press new component we're going to call this top tray the one we just did okay so we want we don't want to see that so now we're in our other tray so you can create a sketch but this time we're going to select this bottom part right here so again we're going to project geometry create project I'm going to project this contour here press OK so we have that contour there same procedure as before I'm going to create I'm going to create a rectangle center distance so just space it out like that now we're going to go to sketch dimension and we're going to click there there and the offset is going to be say one millimeter 
Sorry if I'm going a little bit fast, but it's just the same thing. So one millimeter and one millimeter. We can finish the sketch. We're going to extrude it about five millimeters, or is that too thick? Five millimeters actually looks like a very thick tray. So I'll make this one two millimeters. That looks a little bit better. We don't need it to be that thick. So we can actually go back and change the other one later. It's more the idea of the design that, that is important. Uh, you could always modify things the way that you want. Okay, so I'm going to create a sketch on this rectangle. And what we need is a bunch of perforated holes. So the way that we can do this is once we're in Create Sketch, um, we can create a circle any size. We, we can make it 8 millimeters. Sounds decent. We just don't want the rocks to fall through. Now we need to dimension it so that it's fully constrained. So we're going to dimension this circle to this side of the rectangle. We're going to say about 10 millimeters from each side. And millimeters from each side. So now we want to create a bunch of holes um, on this tray. So it's kind of tedious to have to um, create a circle, space it, create a circle, space it about 100 times. What you can just do is you can click Create rectangular pattern. For the objects you're going to select the outside of the circle. Directions, we're going to click this line and that line. And now we're going to um, distance them. On the X direction we're going to say about 150. And for the Y direction we're going to distance it about um, 60. So now it'll give you a little preview, and we obviously want more holes than this, so you can always just change the quantity in each axis. So we can say we want 10 circles in the x-axis, and we want 5 in the y, and it'll space it out like this. So we can say, okay, we're okay with that, and click OK, and now we have all our circles. We can now finish sketch, press extrude, and then click on each of the circles. This part's a little bit tedious as well. But imagine how long it would take you if you just tried to make each circle. If you ever, if you ever select the wrong thing, say select this, and you don't want to redo the entire thing, if you just press Control and then you click it again, it'll um, deselect it. So I selected all my circles. Um, I'm going to um, cut it to, I'm going to cut it to the bottom. So again, you want to deselect the body that we already made, and then select the bottom of the tray, and click OK. And it'll cut it like this. So that looks pretty decent. You just select all the things we made so far. So yeah, this is what we've made so far. Um, and in the next part, I will be continuing in uh, making more parts uh, for this hydroponic system. Um, I'll be making uh, a junction box next and I'll be putting stuff into the assembly, the electrical components uh, such as the Raspberry Pi, breadboard and relays and seeing how they all fit together.